Well, welcome aboard Concorde 101. This um, this tour around Concorde 101, based at IWM Duxford, is based on a 360-degree panoramic app that we've used to show you around. The app's available on Duxford Aviation Society's website, but this gives you a good idea of what you can see on the app. And you'll notice as you go around, lots of little icons of things you could explore further on the app. So we're going in to Concorde via the starboard rear door. Um, as we go around the plane, you'll see if you look at the top left-hand corner, a little diagram showing you which camera's in use at the time, and the little green arc shows which way the camera's looking. So here we're just coming around now to look forward from the rear camera position. As you see coming into view now, those two light brown colored boxes are actually computers that were used to control the variable intake, which was largely developed on this Concorde. This Concorde uh, was the government's pre-production one, the UK government's pre-production one, and did most of the testing from 1970 to 1975 when the um, British Airways and Air France Concours came into service. There, just going past the camera, you can see the black box or flight data recorder. This Concorde, as I say, flew into 1975 and then it came to Duxford. Um, government sent it there to be looked after by Duxford Aviation Society, a partner of the Imperial War Museum. It's been lovingly restored over the years and now looks exactly like it did when it's carrying out its trials. Restoration has been carried out by Duxford Aviation Society's own engineers and also engineers from Heritage Concord, a, a specialist uh, charitable group that has helped us immensely in dealing with it. Now, looking at the top icon, you can see the camera has now moved to the engineering station, which is um, situated just forward of the wing. And there you see the whole array of desks, um, plotting equipment and so on that the engineers used to develop um, or during the development of the plane. It used to carry a crew of engineers not only for in-flight evaluation but also of course when it was on the ground in somewhere maybe in Africa they wouldn't have an engineer there locally who could uh, repair a Concorde or service it but we had our own engineers with us so they would uh, they would look at that. What you see um, in the distance, the light green thing, is actually an emergency escape chute. They had two of them on the plane where the crew could bail out should it not function as they thought it should. Um, and just to the lower edge of the screen, you see the black and white bottles, oxygen tanks. It carried its own oxygen supply and the crew of um, engineers and the pilots wore uh, Air Force style flight suits because as far as they were concerned it was a test aircraft unlike any that had been flown before. So now we're coming back again looking at the little icon at the top to face forward and there you can see the, the flight deck so our next step is into the flight deck and we'll have a look around that. So there's your forward view of the flight deck. Um, the little stripes on the windscreen, the diagonal stripes, are actually on the heat shield, which is beyond the cockpit window. Heat shield was very necessary because uh, as the plane went supersonic, the front end of it heated up considerably up to about 125 degrees. So apart from making it aerodynamic, the visor or heat shield deflected that heat from the cabin. Instrumentation is pretty similar to most four-engine aircraft of the time, except, of course, um, the, the uh, speed indicators went somewhat higher. Uh, there were afterburners and uh, a control to lower the nose and the visor for landing and takeoff. We're panning around now to look at the engineer's station and an extremely complex piece of equipment for monitoring the engine, engines and uh, lots of other uh, performance indicators, the hydraulic pumps, the generators and so on, but also for moving fuel around, very important in this aircraft to move fuel between different tanks to keep the balance fore and aft and port to starboard correct. What you can see now are loads and loads of little circuit breakers, 848 in total it has, and that's because every single electrical item has its own circuit breaker. So if you need to change or service it uh, during flight, you, if you could access it, you could isolate it there, um, or if it malfunctioned, you can isolate it there. So we're back again, looking forward to the cockpit area. The visibility in Concorde was extremely poor going forward. You couldn't see to tax your takeoff, hence the visor goes down and the nose lowers. So that's about it. That's our little tour around Concorde 
using our 360 degree app. As I said earlier, all those little white icons you see from the app itself, you can actually go to those positions and have a close look at what's there. I hope you've enjoyed the tour, and if you want to see more of it, more of Concord, either visit us at Duxford or have a look at the app. Thanks very much.